This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome to Seek Reality with your host, Roberta Grimes. Author and attorney Roberta Grimes will explore and illustrate how she, after an extraordinary experience of light in childhood, has discovered channels of communication to the afterlife and how these implications have an effect on our everyday lives. Please welcome the host of Seek Reality, Roberta Grimes. Hello, everyone. This is Roberta Grimes, of course, and this is Seek Reality, and I'm thrilled that you're with us today. Last week, we discussed with Virginia Hummel the fascinating topic of children reincarnating within the same family. And this week, we're going to consider a different type of child reincarnation that has an utterly different provenance, and it may perhaps be remarkably common. This is the sort of child reincarnation that Dr. Ian Stevenson wrote about. Now, as you know, we write, a planned, we write planned exit points into our lives, and sometimes people who suffer an unplanned death, and usually it's a violent death, will not transition normally. Instead, apparently, they hang around here after their bodies have died, and they choose a mother and reincarnate without ever spending recuperative time in the afterlife. I want to stress the fact that this, this is not the normal route of reincarnation, but it does occur. And while the reported cases come from countries that recognize reincarnation by and large, there's no reason to believe the instance of this kind of reincarnation without having fully transitioned is limited just to people who happen to die in those particular countries. Rather, I think it's li likely that this sort of thing happens everywhere. In Western countries, parents frown upon small children who mention pre-birth memories, and very soon those memories are gone. Erlander Haraldson is a revered co-author of the wonderful book, I love this book, At the Hour of Death, in which he and Carlos Osa studied thousands of people approaching death in India and in the United States, and they did a stunning study of deathbed visions that still is a definitive work in this, in this area. In fact, it's, what, 30 or 40, 40 years? <laughs> it's been a long time. But now he's back and with a wonderful book on an entirely different topic. He wrote about past life memories of children called I Saw the Light and Came Here. This is, a, this is in the Ian Stevenson mold, and I think you'll find his book fascinating. Welcome to Seek Reality for the second time, Erlander. I'm so glad you're here. Well, thank you, Roberta. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Um, now, this is a book which... I, I frankly was astonished to find this is an area of interest for your of yours, but it's been going back. It's been an interest for a very long time. D tell us how you met Ian Stevenson. You were you went you were going to the University of Virginia at the time, right? Yes, uh, uh, I was at the University of Virginia around 1971-1972, and there I came to know Dr. Stevenson. And we became close friends, and very soon we were involved in uh, studies, like one study of an Icelandic medium. And then much later, in the, in the late 80s, he uh, asked me if I would be interested in studying some cases of children who claim to remember a past life. And I certainly was uh, interested. And then we uh, picked a country that, because it's better to do a study, we're going to study many cases in one country than spread them into many. And uh, so we decided on Sri Lanka, where it had once been before. And uh, the only condition I really made was that uh, I could study many enough cases to make a psychological study of these children namely to find out if children who claim to remember a past life different, differ in any significant way from other so-called normal children. 
and uh, and he agreed to that. So in the end, I studied first studied some thirty in in Sri Lanka, but in the end they became over sixty. And then I later added another country to my uh, to the uh, where I also studied cases, and that was in Lebanon, which is very different from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, of course, is an Asian country. It is a Buddhist country, whereas uh, Lebanon is a well, it's a Mediterranean country, and the the predominant religion is uh, is uh, Islam. But uh, the cases I found are among Druze that have a religion that is uh, related to Islam. But but the, but do the, the Druze agree, uh, believe in reincarnation, right? Yes, the, the Druze they believe in uh, reincarnation, uh, and that is something that uh, most uh, members of the Islamic religion do not do. But some of them do it. Well, we're we're going to need to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to learn a lot more about this fascinating area. I mean, reincarnation is something that Christians don't believe in, but to be perfectly frank, Christians have no idea what they're talking about. This is a whole new world of interest, and I think you're going to find it as fascinating as I do. Roberta Grimes, Seek Reality with Dr. Erlander Haraldson, and we'll be right back. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. This is Roberta Grimes on Seek Reality. We're talking with Dr. Erlander Haraldson all the way to, from Iceland. You're in Iceland right now, aren't you, sir? Yes, I am. Well, see, it's a small world after all. What we're talking about specific a specific kind of reincarnation that generally involves a traumatic death, probably an unplanned death, and the child reincarnates, or the often it's an older person who dies, reincarnates as a child often nearby and often soon, but I don't think any of that is certain. Tell us a little more about this whole process, Doctor. What, had, what, what do you make of all the cases you've studied? So repeat the last question. What do you make of all these cases? What, what, what do you learn from them? What, what is this phenomenon that we're talking about? Well, uh, <clears throat> I think both I and previously Stevenson, we had investigated a number of cases so, they, uh, so I believe that there is quite some evidence that the reincarnation takes place. And, uh, and uh, 
but the children who uh, claim these memories, they usually claim a memory of uh, dying, of, uh, suffering a violent death, that they died uh, prematurely, as you said, that they died mostly in accident, perhaps in murder and so on. And uh, yes, and they will also, also often give, give specific details about their life and uh, what their work was, uh, who, what people were around them, what they were doing, and so on. And uh, and uh, first, of course, when we investigate these cases, we interview the child and the mother and the father separately. Also, often the brothers and sisters of the child to, to be certain about what the child has really been talking about. Not that it has been saying two or three, making two or three statements once or twice, but the child has to be, has to have repeatedly talk, told about the past life. And these are tiny, these are, I should just say, these are little children, right? They're two, three, four years old at most. Yes, they usually start to talk about, talk about the past life around the time when they can really speak. And that is on the average two and a half, somewhere between two and two and two and a half years. Okay. Which is an interesting thing in itself. So, so when the child comes into this life fresh from the prior life and, and talking about the prior life details, often quite specific details, uh, that the child clearly believes what he or she is saying. And often there's no, no reason why they would know the stuff they seem to know about a past life, right? Yes. And uh, when we learn about a case, but we first... Uh, get all the facts about it, about what the child has been saying. And uh, then we uh, uh, try to verify the case, or if there have been attempts to verify the case, we go through the process very meticulously again. And in quite some number of these cases, their statements can't be verified. For example, if I tell you about a case, it was a girl to see the Silva, she lived in a in a small town in Sri Lanka, but she claimed to have uh, lived previously in another town, Akuresa, and that she had been walking over a over a footbridge over a river. She had fallen into the river. She had been five months pregnant, and she had drowned. And her husband had also tried to save her. Uh, threw himself into the river, but also drowned. And she also made the statement that uh, she had previously lived in a in a in a larger house. She w lived in a in a clay house. She was a very in a very poor family. And we went to Akuresa, and we were able to find a place where there was a footprints. And then we asked around if uh, anyone had uh, drowned from a foot footbridge, who had fallen off the footbridge. Yes, we were told on the other side of the river um, there was a uh, there was a family rather close to the river, and they had a daughter-in-law who had fallen into the river and drowned. Wow. And that, yeah. That, that's pretty exciting. So, yes, that's uh, pretty exciting. And then we went to the coroner who investigated the, the cause after the drowning. And uh, we found in this record that this woman had indeed been pregnant. What, what's interesting to me is that when you put together all the claims the children make, there are some cases where you actually can find the previous person and it's pretty pretty certain that it was because most of the statements match up, and those that don't um, don't. It's just you can't confirm it, but they don't they don't rule out that this is the the previous personality. Don't you find that fascinating that some of these are real that you could prove they're real? Yeah, yeah yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is uh, very interesting. 
Of course, I have by now studied so many of them. I studied over 60 in, in Sri Lanka, studied over 30 in Lebanon, and I knew about Stevenson's studies, so I am familiar with this material. Yes. But it is indeed a very remarkable thing. And uh, it, uh, I just wish that more people knew about it. Yes, and yes. If they would uh, read my book, I saw a light and came here, they would come to know a lot more about the studies of What's, children who, who claim to remember a previous life. What I love about your book is you have all of these different cases that you've investigated and, and carefully you've documented what the children said and then you've tried to determine um, who a past life would be and then how many of these things match up. So basically you've tried to solve each of these cases. Um, I think that every one of them probably will turn out to have been, if you were able to solve them all, you, they would all turn out to have actually have been legitimate. I don't think the children are making these stories up. They, they seem too determined uh, uh, and personally invested in the notion well, that they had been these people. Don't you feel that way? Well, I don't, I'm, I'm, uh, it's not my experience that they are making up these cases, but we should though also remember that a large number of these cases, they are not, we do not succeed in solving yes. them. We right. do not succeed in, in verifying what the child, what the children have been saying. And then we might also add that uh, there have been also cases in the United States and in Europe. Uh, so these cases have not only been found in Asian countries. Yes, but it seems to be the case that many people who don't believe in reincarnation, especially Christians, who would be really turned off by all of this, probably just tell their children, no, you don't remember that. And usually these memories fade, right, as people get into this lifetime. What, about what age do they typically fade? Well, they, they remember particularly from the young age of like two or something. But then by the age they go to school, they tend to many of them forget these uh, memories or whatever it is. But some of them uh, continue remembering, remembering it in their adult life. Extraordinary. So, yeah. One of the things that's, that I find fascinating is that when people are, are die violently, especially if they're attacked by someone else uh, or they have a, you know a, a, an auto accident or something, their body, when they're born, will often bear scars from that previous death. Talk about that. Well, that is <clears throat> one of the characteristics of some of the cases that they have so-called birthmarks. And uh, uh, these birthmarks, um, they often relate are uh, like remains or uh, a reappearance of some wounds they suffered when they died. Because as, I, as we told, mentioned earlier, um, a large percentage of these children with, with past their memories, they suffered a violent death. They died yes. in accidents very frequently and so on. Yes. And I can tell you about one case of Purnima Ekanayaka in Sri Lanka, she uh, claimed that she had uh, been an incense maker, but uh, and then uh, she didn't know where she had lived. But then uh, she one night saw on, uh, on television a documentary of the, uh, of the Kalinia temple. And then they told, uh, she told her parents I lived on the other side of the river that passes the Kalinia temple. So then uh, soon a, a man went there and uh, across the river and he asked if there had, were any uh, uh, incense makers there in the area. Yes, there were. And uh, he met one of them. And uh, but uh, Punim had said they were making 
evo kaže they may make a specific kinds of um, of uh, of, uh, of incense and she, and she gave two names for them and these people they were uh, that were found across the river they were indeed making uh, incense of the kind that she had been talking about she talked about even their brand names, right? Or it was I remember she had some specific names of the incense that turned out to be right. The yes. little child did. Yeah, isn't that amazing? I was amazed by that. Yes, uh, that was a very interesting case. Uh, one of the most convincing cases that I met with. Absolutely. But, uh, this girl, uh, she had been the incense maker. And one day she was taking incense to the market on a bicycle. But on the way to the market, a bus came and ran over her, and she died in the accident. And uh, we still have the autopsy from her, from the coroner who in examined her body. But when she was born, she had a, a, a cluster of scars on the left side of her chest. And on the autopsy that was made, you see that this was just the place where the wheel of the bus went over her body, broke the, the, the ribs that penetrated the, the intestines, and she died. Yeah, that, that is fascinating. You have a picture in there, too, of, of, of these yes, white, you, whitish you, marks. Yes, you have a picture of that in my in my book. And I remember yeah, Dr. Stevenson um, had a picture of uh, someone with all these these uh, buckshot marks on on their chest that were there after the previous personality had been shot in the chest. Yeah. Fascinating. We're going to need to take a quick break, but we have a lot more to talk about. This is, this is an area where once more people know about it, I think it's going to, people will be very, very interested in what it means and how what we can learn more. This is Roberta Grimes, Seek Reality. We'll be right back. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome back to Seek Reality. This is Roberta Grimes with Dr. Erlander Haraldson, who... I think is is a wonderful scholar in this field. I mean, he writes definitive, serious stuff. I never even knew that you knew Ian Stevenson, never mind that you worked with him. I think this is so fascinating. His book is I Saw a Light and Came Here, and it's a it's a, a book in the in the um, reincarnation mold of Dr. Stevenson's work. It's a wonderful book, very easy, very accessible to understand. And some of the information that it gives is is just astonishing. Talk a little bit more about, I mean, this is an awkward thing to have happen in the family, to have the first words out of a little child's mouth. You're not my real mommy. I want to go home to my real mommy. That must be a real ego deflator for those mothers. Yes. Well, <laughs> we found some cases like in Sri Lanka where the child would uh, say, I want to go see my previous family. And uh, they would uh, tell the uh, the place, uh, the village, where to go, and uh, and uh, and they went to that village, and they were able to trace that family, who had lived a life that they were, uh, that the child had been talking about. 
So there were many, many remarkable cases. Yes. The, uh, also, these uh, birthmark cases that you mentioned earlier, with scars from wounds that uh, correspond with wounds in the previous life. And Stevenson, he wrote uh, very extensive uh, two volumes about it, um, giving very, uh, very uh, vivid details about many of these cases. And of course, in my book, I also described a few of them and gave all the tales that I was able to give. And then perhaps one thing we should mention that uh, uh, my book, I saw a light and came here. There are two authors of it. It is myself who had studied uh, the cases in the field. Then uh, it was an old friend of mine and colleague James Matlock, who is very well versed in the literature, much better than I am. He had read about all the different cases from uh, Stevenson and others, and he wrote uh, the second part of the book. And uh, so it is a uh, very extensive book uh, on this uh, on this topic. And uh, yeah. So, I, I think that you we, we have to say this is probably a lot more common than people realize. Um, I, I know that uh, you know Dr. Stevenson found like thousands. Did he find thousands of cases like this as he did this work? Well, I think I don't know how many cases Stevenson found, <clears throat> but he found a lot of them. Um, I think that. Uh, I think at the University of Virginia, when he was placed, I think they have an on record over 1,000 cases. Yes, and yes. And it's now a successor there to, to Dr. Stevenson, and also Dr. Jim Tucker, who is a child psychiatrist. And he has continued to study these, study the cases but with emphasis on American cases and European cases, which uh, Stevenson rather sort of neglected, maybe because yes. he, yeah, okay. But uh, and Tucker has found uh, quite a few impressive American cases because he has given many interviews uh, to the press uh, in, in the United States, and then uh, people have come forward and, uh, and told them about uh, children who they know, knew who have talking about, um, spoken about the past life. Isn't that amazing? This is so extraordinary. It doesn't seem to be a harmful thing for that new child's life. I mean, they seem to go on, don't they, and, and have a reasonable life. In fact, your, your studies indicate they, they tend to be brighter um, a little yeah. more high-strung, perhaps, oh, but, but yeah. brighter. Yeah. I, I, I made a psychological study of these children, and uh, they maybe were a bit high-strung, as you said, but they did very well in school. They, they, uh, they had a great vocabulary as, uh, at an early age than, than other children, and uh, so it, it it seems to have been an asset to them to have some memories of our past life. Yeah, surprising. <laughs> have, did you ever find a case of xenoglossy? I, I, did you find, ever find a case of xenoglossy, a child who could speak a language that was not this, this lifetime's language? Uh, uh, no, I didn't find any of that kind. There was, a, I remember there was a case in Sri Lanka where uh, the child would uh, use uh, words uh, that were not common in her area, but were commonly used in uh, in the area uh, not yes. far away where she yeah. claimed to have lived. Just some common slave like uh, father and grandfather and so on. Yes. Uh, but I didn't find really cases of xenoglossy. No, I can't say that. 
Um, I, I should just say parenthetically to people listening that Dodger Stevenson did find some cases like that where people had un, unlearned languages that a, that a child would be able to speak, which is, is to me, a, a lends additional credibility to these cases. This yeah. is a phenomenon that actually does happen. Even a few cases like this <laughs> would indicate it does happen, but there are many cases and these are only the ones the experts have found. So it's very, very, very fascinating. But uh, I have found another case of Sina Blasi. There was a medium I studied here in Iceland some 40, 40 years ago or more. And uh, it happened once with him that one of the communicators to one of the sitters he spoke in a language the medium didn't know about at all. And uh, the case was this, there was, an Ameri there was a man who was a professor at the American University in Washington, but he was uh, a Dane, he was brought up in Greenland where his father was a clergyman. And there he learned of course uh, Greenlandish just by playing with the children, the Greenlandic children. And then, uh, uh, and then he once happened to fly over Iceland and made a stop to see a friend of his. And then he got into this uh, sitting with this Icelandic medium, Hafstein Björnsson. And during that sitting, that seance, there came to him a, a person who, uh, who spoke in the Greenland language, and they conversed quite a bit. And, uh, wow! <laughs> and, yes, they very, very extraordinary. And um, I have um, recently written that up, and it will be coming, appearing in a, in a journal in Britain on the Society for Psychical Research. Fascinating. This is this is an area where I think um, the the knowledge is is going. This is going to become much more commonly known. Part of the fun of doing this research, I find, is that there are so many of these kind of sub areas which are so rich in information and evidence that most yeah. people have no idea about. It's amazing yeah. to me. There are these so the borderline areas of various kinds when we find. Uh, phenomena that are generally ignored, but are really essentially very interesting. Yes. But, uh, little attention is paid to them also because they are also quite rare. For example, the case of children who remember a past life, they are not common, they are very rare. Like in, in Sri Lanka, which has a population of 18 million people, we were perhaps able to find on the average uh, five cases per year. But of course, we had no way to know that we were searching in the country. But anyway, and now of course in America, you occasionally find children. There was one famous pilot case, the Leininger case. Uh, that, uh, but these cases are always rare. We shouldn't forget that. Yes. Yeah, there, there, there was a case of, of, a, of a military um, uh, pilot or something that uh, mm -hmm. uh, he, his plane crashed or he was shot down, and yeah. uh, a child had memories of that. Some of these children seem to, be, seem to, between lives, have gone great distances. You, you had one case where someone had been living, I think it was in Lebanon and in, and in America, and then died in America, but reincarnated in, in Lebanon. I think those were the two countries. That's unusual, isn't it? Yes, that is rather unusual. Usually, the children they talk about are alive in their vicinity, in their country, and close to the time they yes. live themselves. It maybe goes back a, a few years, but rarely and in a, a large number of years. Mostly it is just from uh, a year or two or three. And uh, so it's close in time and close in space, these cases. Wasn't it one of them a week or something? And, the, and there was a seven, maybe nine days, something like that. And the reincarnation happened? Yes, the, I think there is one such case, yes. 
That's kind of amazing. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. going to let any grass grow under his feet before he got back in a body. That's for sure. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. What what's, what strikes you about this these cases as a group? What 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 what, what most amazes you about them? What is most amazing for me about these cases? Yes. Well, uh, the most amazing thing is that they exist. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right. That they exist but, at all. But, uh, that is uh, contrary to the commonly uh, accepted view about uh, reality and consciousness and so on. Because we are generally considered to be only physical beings, and that consciousness is created by the brain and in the brain. Which is so not. When the brain is destroyed. <laughs> there is nothing. There is nothing more, and uh, there would be no uh, way for a uh, for a memory that existed at one time, one brain to be trans to a new developing brain. That is such an excellent point. These cases are yet more refutation of the nonsensical belief among mainstream scientists that consciousness gener is generated in the brain. There's no evidence that that's true other than their materialist dogma, which is actually bogus. It only dates back 100 years. Even Dr. Max Planck said that that was not true, that consciousness pre-exists matter. So um, you're absolutely right. That's it. Just even one of these cases refutes the scientists, and it's frustrating that they just don't, well, don't seem I to think, get it. Uh, I think that the most scientists who are uh, like psychologists, they ignore these cases. They or do. They do. They ignore a lot of a lot of things. We're going to we're going to need to take a quick quick break, Erlander. We're going to need to take a quick break. So hold that thought, and we're going to come right back, everyone. Erlander Haraldson with Roberta Grimes on Seek Reality. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back to Seek Reality, everyone. This is Roberta Grimes with Dr. Erlander Haraldson, and we're talking about his wonderful book, I Saw a Light and Came Here. He knew and worked with, and I never knew this about you, sir, he knew and worked with Dr. Ian Stevenson, who was the venerable pioneer in this field of an almost immediate reincarnation without going back to the afterlife. This is, this is a new area which very few people know about, and yet the cases are abundant. Uh, Erlander, what what should so so someone's child is starting to say, "You're not my mommy. I have another mommy," or something. 
What should a parent say to that child? What should a parent do? How do you how do we help that child? Well, I think we should just listen to them carefully, let them speak, but not try to persuade them into any different, any specific direction. Just listen and let them talk and uh, see what comes out of it. And if they are pressing to go to some particular place, then ask them, um, do you know how to get there? Uh, and so on. So just take it easy and uh, and see what comes out of it. I don't think, and yes, then there is another thing. It would be, it's very important to take some notes uh, when they start to talk about this, make a note of what they say. So we, we have, have, a note, have these notes later if we want to examine the case more thoroughly. Should they try? Should they try to contact the University of Virginia? And then uh, I think uh, they should try to uh, contact uh, Dr. Jim Tucker at the University of Virginia. He is That's the right person to uh, approach. I am now in Iceland and far away. Uh, he would be a very good person, really the very best person to approach. Dr. Jim Tucker, he has taken over the work of Dr. Ian Stevenson, who made his transition uh, earlier in this uh, early early part of this century. Um, if you're in, in another country, Dr. Tucker may in fact be able to help you know who in your country might be able to work with your child. But it's good to 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 investigate all of this. You want to give the child closure if possible. It's fine if they meet this previous family. Don't you think so? I mean, there. This is this enriches everyone's life to find yeah. out to to meet this family. I might also mention uh, one Dieter Hustler in Germany, <clears throat> who has taken uh, interest in these cases from populist uh, apocalypse. Then there is also one uh, Titus Rivas in Holland, who has also written a book, book in touch on cases that he has investigated. So uh, the cases are in being investigated, not only by Jim Tucker, but also, also in some other countries. Very exciting. And then, of course, I came to know one case here in Iceland and studied that quite a long time ago. It was a boy who was uh, brought up here in Reykjavik with his uh, single mother and grandparents. But then he started to talk about life up in the country. He was always talking about the life up in the country and what was happening there or what had happened there. <laughs> and then he often mentioned that there had been an accident in a, with a tractor. Someone had died. And then the father of this uh, boy, uh, whom the boy knew very little, but the family came to know or, or, or recall that he had, was brought up in the, in the country. And, uh, and it so happened that uh, his, uh, his brother had uh, died in a tractor accident. And wow. so they, uh, and also the, the little boy made some statements about uh, the farm where, where he claimed to have lived that fitted pretty well. Uh, then uh, this uh, thing about the, uh, the fatal uh, tractor accident that made them think seriously that this remem boy remembered the past life. That's amazing that they were able to, to solve that. I that was, That's in your book, too. I thought that was like a real defective story. One of the things I love about your book is you write very well. It's a very easy book to read. Um, I mean, sometimes when you read scholarly things, they feel dry, but yours yours doesn't at all. It's quite to the point and lively. So you write you're right. Well, sir, that helps a lot when you have information to convey. I was a journalist for many years. That explains it, then. That explains it. Well, um, I really recommend this book. I saw a light and came here. If you're interested at all in trying to understand a little bit more about 
how something could go wrong and still turn out right, which is what's happened in these cases. Someone was knocked out of his body. The body died. Yeah. But this but this person was able to find a different body and go into it and keep some memories from that prior life. I think it's just a, yeah. a fascinating yeah. concept. As you, as you mentioned, there were some uh, children who also remembered something from the time between death and when they were born. Yes. Uh, like there was one case of a, of a, of a child uh, that uh, uh, she could follow the, the, the funeral and the grief of her parents, but then uh, she followed them and then suddenly she saw a light and then uh, she was born with a particular family. Yes, yeah. And when she saw the light, she, said, uh, she emerged into physical life again. Yeah, that, there are, in, in, in Dr. Stevenson's cases as well, there are some reports that children have of what they did in between. And they never went back to what we think of as the afterlife, but instead they hung around here. Fascinating. Yes. Dr. Dr. Haraldson, how would people reach you? And you have a website. Yes, I have a website. Um, at the, well, if they just put in my name, in uh, in uh, in uh, Google or something, they will find several things about them about me. Also, my website, and in my website, there's a lot of information. It's about my books, about the various papers I have written, about my studies of reincarnation cases, but also about my uh, my studies of other sort of phenomena. So uh, I am easy to find. And then, of course, there is uh, now um, a, a new source of uh, information that is the Sci Encyclopedia, Sci Encyclopedia, because those of us in the field, we have found that Wikipedia, they tend to take a very yes. negative approach to this phenomena. So some uh, British people, they started uh, uh, a special uh, sort of Encyclopedia on Psychic Phenomena. PSY Encyclopedia. And, uh, I, yes. uh, among others, have written quite a few uh, openings or items in that sci encyclopedia. We're going to have that. We're going to be talking about that specifically on Seek Reality in a certain point. Well, it's been thrilling to have you here, and we will have you back. Um, and I, I just I hope that uh, that your fall is going well, and I hope you you have uh, a, a lot more interesting things to look at. It's fascinating uh, to be. It's like being in a candy store to have all this to investigate. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Uh, Erla. Happy to talk to you again, uh, Roberta. Dr. Erlander Haraldson, and as you know, this has been Seek Reality. Never forget that you are a powerful, a powerful eternal being. You never began, you never will end. And when you really understand all the implications of that fact, it transforms your life. Next week, our guests will be Suzanne Wilson and Mark Pitstick. A few months back, someone asked me through my website some questions about mental illness in the afterlife, the purpose of mental illness in people's life plans, just mental illness in general, and I didn't have a clue. But Suzanne Wilson is very knowledgeable in this area, and she considers Mark Pitstick to be very knowledgeable as well. So she suggested the two of them come on and join us together. This is a very important topic. It's very seldom discussed, so I don't think you're going to want to miss this. Join us next week. This week, we've been speaking with Dr. Erlander Haraldson, who I find just delightful. He's the revered author of the groundbreaking 1977 book with Carlos Osis, At the Hour of Death. Theirs is still the definitive scientific study of deathbed visions. And now Dr. Haraldson has tackled the subject of reincarnation and childhood with another co-author in a terrific new book. It's called I Saw the Light and Came Here. And I really recommend it because it's so easy and enjoyable to read. I mean, getting involved in all these children's lives and how complex. Imagine being a little child and thinking you're in the wrong place because you remember vividly a different family. Amazing. 
The kind of prompt reincarnation that this book talks about apparently happens all over the world, but tragically, in most Western countries, most parents suppress their small children's talk about having had another life. If you know a little one who seems to have had a previous life, please, please give this little eternal being who's just starting another Earth Plate adventure the courtesy of really listening. You're going to be fascinated by, by what the child has to say, and you're going to help the child find closure so he or she can better settle into this new life that is just beginning now. And as always, I want you to know I'm grateful for your friendship. Please keep coming back, and if you have anything you want to know or any question or any comment or anything at all, or you just feel like having a chat, don't hesitate to contact me through robertagrimes.com. Just make sure you give me the right address. I answer all my emails. Meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, knowing that you, you are a powerful eternal being and you are infinitely loved. <laughs>